I'm Bethany Anderson, and you're listening to The Hope Adventure. Welcome to episode 22, Heartstrings and Pie. Following God into unknown places can be scary, daunting, even terrifying at times. Have you ever wondered how to navigate the change of seasons or chase after a dream with a lens of hope and adventure? rather than fear and analysis paralysis? Listen in, and we'll see what we can learn together about the adventure that is following God. After all, the greatest adventure is His presence. On today's episode, I'm talking about one of my favorite people, my grandmother. Listen in, and let's see what we can learn about God. Are you ready? Let's go. Because I lived overseas for so many of my adult years, I made it a top priority to spend time with my grandmother Dot anytime I was home in Texas for short seasons of time. She was my only remaining living grandparent, so we scheduled weekly grandmother-granddaughter dates. Usually we'd go out for lunch, but we'd also spend lots of times doing projects around Dot's house, like framing magazine cutouts into the shape of a cross, canning peaches, giving old frames a fresh coat of paint, and my favorite, pickling beets. I remember with fondness the time we baked a pineapple coconut cake for our family reunion. While we were waiting for the buzzer on the oven timer, we sipped our sweet tea and discussed the origin of my grandmother's love for sweets. Dot grew up on a farm in central Texas, and with four siblings and little money, big meals were scarce. Even in the tough times, though, my great-grandmother would bake a pie. As a young girl, my grandmother says she only got a tiny sliver of pie. To demonstrate, as she always did when recounting this story, she dramatically took her fingers and put them in the shape of a small triangle, wrinkled her forehead, and stared at me with a glimmer in her eye until I nodded in agreement. Yes, yes, that is a small piece of pie. I said this with as much gusto as possible so she'd understand that I do believe A world with no pie is a sad one, indeed. I love pie. Anyway, because of this mealtime tradition, my grandmother always dreamed of eating pie, literally. She told me stories of childhood nights with her head on the pillow, thinking and drooling about mouth-watering pie. So, in her latter years, she ate as much pie as she liked. She was making up for lost time, I suppose. In fact, when she was 93 years old, I recall visiting with her over a meal and she hardly ate any of her food, complaining that she wasn't really hungry anymore. Not two minutes later, the waiter walked up to clear her plate and she said, I'll have a slice of chocolate pie, please. These types of encounters always made me laugh because I definitely inherited her sweet tooth. Although I haven't succumbed to eating chocolate icing on my toast yet as a replacement to Nutella like she did, I'm sure that time will come. Anyway, after that long conversation about the challenges of a childhood without much pie around pineapple cake that day, my grandmother looked over at me and said, I want to tell you something. Do you mind? I was so taken aback by this question because she was so private about the details of her life. She came from the generation that doesn't like to overshare or pry. And this question shifted the atmosphere in the room. I told her to go ahead and tuned into a story that danced out of her mouth like a melodic dirge. She talked about an April day in 1993. My grandfather Buddy had invited her to go pick some vegetables with him in their garden at their farm, about 20 miles outside of town. She had decided that day that she would be more productive working on her flower garden at the house, and that he should go without her, making sure to return by 5 p.m., Though he normally took his little black dog companion, R.P., with him for farm work, he decided to leave him with my grandmother because he had been acting very strange recently. So off my grandfather went. Later in the day, hours after my grandfather had gone to the farm, as my grandmother was pulling up some weeds, she felt a sharp pain fluttering in her heart. She told me that she literally felt like her heart was wrapped in string and someone was tugging it with force and violence stealing her breath with each tug. She ran inside and drank a tall glass of water to settle her nerves and ease the pain. She thought she was having a heart attack. 
but then the pain subsided and left her feeling discombobulated and off-kilter. Despite this, she went back to finish the work in her garden until my grandfather returned. But he never did. She reckons that moment of heart torture was the exact moment when my grandfather Buddy fell off his tractor to his death. She said, Bethany, I always thought heartstrings sounded like a poetic cliché, but I know they're real. The following is an excerpt from her journal after the death of my grandfather. Memories, how they hurt, my eyes fill with tears, but only for a moment, then I say goodbye to my fears. I'll always love you, my soulmate of years. How can I ever forget you, my love and my dear? I sat there with tears warming my eyes as she told me about her heartstrings, pondering the stories of hope and heartache hiding behind the wrinkles on the beautiful face before me. My grandmother taught me so many things, but that day I saw a depth of pain redeemed by the flickering light of joy in her eyes. I realized that we are all attached by heartstrings, and because we are spiritual beings, we are connected to one another beyond any of us can even begin to imagine. Love transcends the physical and attaches us to one another through the supernatural, through God. My grandmother was one of my closest friends, and I'm privileged to have had so many precious moments with her. She's one of the strongest women I've ever known. She's been through more emotional pain than one should endure in a lifetime. She lost parents, siblings, a husband, two infant sons, two grown sons to cancer, and two grandchildren to ill health and tragedy. She never wavered in her faith, though. She kept her eyes fixed on God and beamed a smile brighter than the sun every time she saw me. She was pretty unpredictable, too, which I also inherited from her. In fact, several years ago, we were sitting in my parents' kitchen after my uncle, her third son, had passed away from leukemia. We were chatting around the table with some aunts and cousins, snacking and sipping on sweet tea, again, and out of nowhere she pulled out this tiny gold ring and handed it to me. She said, Bethany, I want you to have this ring. It was from my engagement. I was honored and said, This is your engagement ring from Buddy? She said, No, it's my engagement ring from Samuel Goldberger. You could hear a pin drop in that moment until my aunt, cousins, and I screamed in confused unison, breaking the silence. What? You were engaged before? She coyly batted her eyelashes as she answered a simple, Yes followed by deafening silence. After a barrage of questions from her audience of family members who had now encircled her like hungry wolves, she proceeded to tell us the details of her engagement to a young Jewish man when she was living and working as an optical nurse in New York City. Not one person in my family knew this story, not my mom or any of her four brothers. We were totally dumbfounded. Then there's the story of Perry, my favorite story. After my grandfather passed away, my grandmother spent time with one of his old work colleagues who was a fellow widower. They became fast companions and spent lots of time together doing errands, sharing meals, and taking day trips to nearby local towns. Then one day, Perry just disappeared. When our family asked what happened to him, all my grandmother would chirp was, He was a pest. I sent him away. We later learned that she told him never to call her again because he was too clingy and it suffocated her freedom and independence. (laughs) About 20 years later, my grandmother was sitting at home watching TV, and the phone rang. She didn't get a good read on the caller ID this particular day and picked up the phone to say, Hello? The voice on the other end of the line said, Hello, Dot. This is Perry. Knowing exactly who it was, my grandmother let the silence between them thicken, and then she said, Larry? No, Perry. Gary? No, Perry. Harry? Well, shoot. And Perry slammed down the phone. I have a very vivid mental image of her repeating the story to me as she sat in the front seat of my blue Subaru. She cackled, rocking back and forth in uncontrollable laughter while recounting the story as tears streamed down her cheeks. I literally thought she was losing her mind. She then looked at me and winked, much like a child who has gotten away with pulling a prank on their parents, and said, 
I did it! He thinks I'm crazy! He'll never bother me again! I saw so much of myself in Dot. In fact, her baby boy, my uncle, still likes to tell me every time he sees me, Bethany, you are just like your grandmother. Crazy. I take this as an absolute compliment. She was a little bit crazy, a little bit unpredictable, and a whole lot feisty. I loved my grandmother, and it's an honor for someone to tell me that I'm like her. Just as she thinks of my grandfather when she thinks of heartstrings, I think of her. My grandmother passed away on August 29th, nearly two years ago. Here's what I wrote the day she danced into eternity. I'm so thankful to God for giving me seven solid days to minister love over my precious grandmother through songs and scriptures, prayer, laughter, and tears. As I left her bedside last night and sensed that God would finally call her home, I anointed her with frankincense oil and whispered into her ear one last time, Run wild and free into Jesus' presence. Run wild and free. Several days prior, I had asked God to give me a sign when she was about to pass. He was so gracious. And right after falling asleep this morning, just after midnight, I awoke and saw a vision of Dot lying on her bed swirled in beautiful, vibrant colors, all while encompassed by a glorious angel of light. Shortly thereafter, we got a call and were told that she had passed on to eternity at 1.50 a.m. Dot is now running wild and free with Jesus. Dot was more than a grandmother to me. She was a best friend. The older I get, the more I realize that we are the same. I am my grandmother, an admirer of all things bright and beautiful, a lover of creatures great and small, and a wild spirit set on blazing new trails and chasing adventures with God. I think about God when I think about my grandmother. Maybe he's not addicted to pie and sweet tea. Maybe he doesn't play pranks on crazy old men, or maybe he does. But he is unpredictable. In fact, the biggest compliment anyone can give me is to say that some part of me resembles God somehow. I wonder if it's the same for you. I want to be like him. I want to spend as much time with him as possible. And I want my heartstrings to be attached to His more than anyone or anything else. What about you? Are your heartstrings attached to His? Because His are attached to you. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for the connections that you give us, the way that you wire us to one another. Thank you for grandparents who've loved us. Thank you for parents. Thank you for friends and siblings, strangers who cross our paths. God, we just thank you for interaction and connection, that you are a God of community, and that because you created us, we are attached to you. May we remember that we are tethered to your heart and that you are for us and that you see us and that you love us and that you know us. We love you so much. We give you all the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening to today's episode of The Hope Adventure. If you want to hear more stories, you can check out my book, Kiss My Fish, which can be found on Amazon. Also, make sure to visit jbethanyanderson.com and subscribe to my monthly newsletter so that you can be up to date with all that's happening with the Hope Adventure and some new projects I'm going to be releasing for you. As we go today, let's remember that our heartstrings are really attached to God. And if you have questions about that, feel free to email me at info at jbethanyanderson.com. Okay, see you right here next week on The Hope Adventure. Bye!
Today's music has been brought to you by the Blue Dot Sessions.